you know, I told you guys about we spend a lot of time going over mindset. And right now, in the way we're training, we do it on Tuesdays and Thursdays right now. So here's what's unique. We gave the team a study today. Um, it's done on 40 people. All right. And what they did is it started with body posture. And they took 20 people and they gave them this positive stance and posture. And after they did it, they would take blood work. And what the blood work shows is that all the people that they gave this positive body posture to, the body responded to that by increased levels of testosterone, right? Uh, increased recovery rate. Then they gave people this, this like negative posture. And what happened is like, there's a rise in cortisol levels. And so, okay, you're a strength coach and, and believe me, I think we get in our own way too many times in our own, in this field. But if you're a strength coach and you know that by putting negative energy out there and by berating a player and by, if you're constantly doing this and you know that it has a negative physiological effect on a player, then why would you continually do it? If you knew just by either being positive or even better, just be neutral and say what it is. Just by being neutral, you can have an increased recovery rate. You can have an increase in testosterone levels. Why wouldn't you do it? Forget about the fact of being at the after party. Just you are you are supposed to be the expert when it comes to performance. But yeah, but isn't the other thing too you run into is um, you know you kind of tend to parent how you were raised, and this is a really interesting one as, as a parent. And I'm you know for me too. Uh, you know, I have twin little girls and I got a little boy, so I, I read a whole bunch of stuff on parenting. And um, the one thing that really stuck with me is like, don't continue the cycle. Like if you weren't raised, and I hear this all the time, well, that isn't the way I was raised. And it's like, maybe the way you were raised wasn't the best way to be raised. You know, like, uh, you, you know, like I grew up with a really smart, condescending dad. I love my dad. He was uh, since passed away, but he was a condescending dude. And because of that, like you kind of grow up in a certain way. And so I make a point not to be condescending to my kids. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like, uh, you know, if you talk about like the cycle of violence, like, hey, I will, you know, you hear people all the time. Well, I was beaten with a belt and being like, I'm sorry. Um, I'm, you know, would I spank my child, my kids? Yes. Am I going to hit my kid with a, with a weapon and a belt? No. Like, like that's, uh, you know, that's like just because you were raised that way. And I think what happens with coaches all too often uh, especially guys that played at a high level or, um, uh, you know, or didn't play at a high level. And they were like, Hey, this is how, I, how I was treated, or this is how I was coached in college, or this is how I was coached when I was young. And they just extend the cycle and be like, well, first of all, that guy was an asshole. Uh, why should I have to follow in that same footsteps just because that's what I was exposed to? Like I played for some really, really hor horrific individuals in terms of offensive line coaches that are very, very successful. Like some of the top guys in the NFL and um, I would never, if I was coaching offensive linemen, I would never treat them that way. Because I know all it does is like have people hoping for your ruin. And um, you know, the one thing which is, you know, and this is an interesting balance of like, how do you, how do you let the players know, like I'm in your corner, we're in this together, but I also expect a high standard from you without you know, having to get into this really like kind of negative, nitpicky discipline versus punishment kind of thing. And uh, I think that's really the, uh, the magic and the art of, uh, of coaching. I mean, I, look, I, I agree. And I'll tell coaches all the time, do you know when you can really push a player and demand something from them? Do you know when you can really do it? When you've taken the time to learn about that guy and he trusts you. That's when you can do it. So you, it's really hard to go day one, balls to the wall, with a guy when you know that 18 year old is probably a deer in the headlights every single day. But one, one of the things we did, and I'm going to give credit to Zach Woodfin. This year I went to um, South Carolina state um, strength and conditioning clinic at Dorman high school down in Spartanburg, South Carolina. I was one of the speakers and Zach Woodfin was another one of the speakers. Zach and I've been friends for a while. So we went out to get some barbecue and all this stuff. And we're, we're talking through our off season plans because it's right before the off season got started. And he told me about this thing that he did with his team. And it was the three H's. And he says, you know, talk to your guys about who their hero is about a hardship that they've been through. And then 
a highlight for them. And so I'm thinking like, man, at the time, Zach was at Kansas. He's at, he's at Mizzou now. But I'm like, I remember thinking when we're sitting there eating, I'm like, man, I, I'm coaching a team in the DMV. I'm like, how am I going to go back to these guys and talk to them about their hero, a hardship, and a highlight? And so I spent probably two weeks trying to figure out how we were going to do this. So what I did is at the end of every team run or team mindset, we'd sit down, we'd have three guys go up there and we'd have them talk about those three things. We kind of give them two or three minutes. I said, I think this is going to be the best way to do it. I told our staff, you know, you have like two weeks before your coaches come back. And I told the staff, I said, listen, we have to lead this off. And look, guys, when you go up there, it you can't lead off with something light. When you talk about your hero, go into detail about who your hero is and why. When you talk about a hardship, give us the real stuff that you're afraid to tell people. And if you if you don't feel like you want to tell us, like I told my staff, you're on the wrong staff. Then I, I thought our relationships were better than that. So I had my guy start. I've got a guy that um, lost a sibling. Um, I've got a guy that uh, battled alcoholism and depression due to shithead coaches. Um, and so these guys start sharing this with the team. So we had our first three guys stand up and it was amazing. Three dudes, real stories right away, you know, brothers in prison, dad hadn't been around since I was whatever. I mean, it was unreal to the point where I had to, for two weeks, we, <laughs> you talk about an emotional wreck at the end of these things, right? I had to slow it down because when the coaches came back in, the players felt like, no, 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 we don't want to talk. And I'm like, whoa, 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 hold up a second. This is one family. So then I went to our coaches, said, look, you guys got to share, but it's got to be the real thing. You cannot, don't come, do not come up here and tell us something that we can read on a bio. And the first coach came up there. It was about challenges with his, um, with his wife and his family. And it took him a while to get through it. And here's what happens. All the players stand up. They're telling them to, you know, breathe, calm down, and they're clapping. Coach, just what, take whatever time you need. We went through this the entire – I'm getting goosebumps thinking about this. We went through this the entire offseason, and we really, really learned about our guys. We started to take notes on it because – I started to find out how we could coach guys different based on what they were sharing with us. So we took notes on it. And then we started creating profiles for every one of our players. These profiles, they're not for like public knowledge. It's for in-house for us to decide how can you coach this guy? That to, to Zach Woodfin, that's been the single credit to him. That's been the single best thing I've done. Um, since being here leading this program. But what it allows you to do, it allows me to push guys past a point that I was able to do it before while maintaining and continuing to grow closer. Because now they know where it's coming from and they know why I'm doing it. And they trust me. The last thing you can do is to, to be frank, you can't go out and mother F guys for no reason, just because. You're, uh, there's no reason for it. There really isn't. And, you know, much like you said, I want to be a part of the after party, man, when these guys, when they accomplish their goals. And it's by building it the way we have, it's so different because it allows us to be that way and it allows us to push them hard. And then going back to the discipline – they don't want to let you down. And so what it's done is they're like, coach, whoa, whoa, we got it. You don't even need, we got this. We're going to teach this guy. We got it. Choices, habits, behaviors. We got it. So I'm with you. I mean, I'm with you hundred percent. I don't, I don't want guys leaving here 10 years down the road talking about how much of an, of an asshole I was because I never cared about them or whatever. I want them coming back. The last thing I want to talk about is reps and sets when they come back and see me. Uh, I want to hear about their families. I want to hear about how they've gotten through some of the toughest times in their life and some of the best times in their life.
Do you feel this has been an approach to help non-black athletes on your team start to feel and experience, empathize, sympathize, and really learn to navigate more what's going on in the world? I think it's helped us because I'm going to go back to what I said before. It's a conversation that I've been having more often um, than I ever have coming back this year. It's about perspective. And again, because you've, we've taken the time to let all of our guys put their stories out there and that's a two way street, right? So if me and you were talking and we go through these three H's, if you feel the need to share something so deep and meaningful about your life to me, then I better be a hundred percent attentive when you're giving it to me. So it's a two way street. And because we've been through that, where the players have done that with each other, I think, you know, you're on the quarantine, the Breonna Taylor, the Ahmaud Ubri thing happens, then the Breonna Taylor incident, and then the George Floyd deal, right? It changed our team. After the George Floyd thing happened, it, it, it you could feel the pot stirring, but after that, we had some guys that wanted to speak. They wanted to say things and they, they wanted to get some stuff off their heart. Well, if it was a black player and you're a white player that has to listen, you know that guy's heart and you know his story. So when he's speaking, it helps when it comes to perspective. Um, it also helped because I think a lot of players wanted to share their perspective. And I'm going to speak very frank on this because it's a conversation I've had with my own friends in my own circle. When I, I grew up knowing that if I got pulled over, something could go wrong. So I was taught in a way by my father how to act in a situation when I were to get pulled over. I've been pulled out of a car before. I, I've been uh, zip tied on the ground by officers before for being the wrong person, right? That's happened before where, where I've grown up. I've been in a situation where uh, I went to court. I, I was on a motorcycle and and um, my brother and I, we, we ran from a, a cop on the road and we ended up having to turn ourselves in. And when we did, the district attorney there, who was a white lady in her mid fifties, I'll never forget. She told me, she said, I'm going to be honest with the two of you. And she says, if you guys were 20 miles south of here, there would be a fine and you would go home and it would never be heard about again. But because you were two black guys in the wrong town, in a town that does, that not many people look like you, um, you're going to go through the system here. And we did. Uh, and it affected me for seven years of my coaching career. Um, I say that to say that people our team was able to share those perspectives with each other because there may be a white guy on the team that says, I never looked at police like that. I, I never had to be raised that way. There are guys that'll talk about how they have to anticipate things. You have to anticipate some things happening to keep yourself in a place to be safe. You can't go and do all the things that some of your friends may do. So those are conversations that we were able to have in-house as a team be frank with but i think it helped because we had already been through this piece where guys understand each other's heart and they know each other's character so they gave each other the platform to speak and when they gave that platform they also gave um other players the ability to, to listen and i think it's helped us and i think it's grown us closer and it's made our team want to take some steps to be active in how they're how they can affect change in their community.